So our first storyteller tonight, Hunter Gatewood, is coming up in a second, but I just want to say we started talking on, um, on Friday night. Uh, we did a pitch meeting and a uh, pitch session, and he's telling a story, and as it unfolds, I, we realize like, we, have, we have some people in common, of course, of course we do. Um, so really, like a person who was very important to me in my young life, and, um, and he wrote just, he gave me this incredible memory jolt of, of a time when I was young and, and funner. <laughs> no, that's not true, I'm super fun. <laughs> but I stayed up later, I stayed up a lot later then. Um, but just gave me this incredible memory jolt, and that's just such a, a, a it was a really beautiful experience. His story is also phenomenal, and uh, here he is. Hi, everybody. I sound loud. You look beautiful. Um, so it's the Friday evening before Christmas. And so naturally, I'm dressed as a slutty elf with a little green Peter Pan hat and a big red feather and this little outfit with like that red rickrack stuff that your grandmother had in her sewing basket and really short, you know, with tights and stuff. And I'm giving away shots of Jägermeister and Goldschlager um, on a crowded dance floor that we've improvised in a amazing, historic, tragic, dirty, gay porn theater <laughs> in the Tenderloin in San Francisco, which is where these things live. Um, and, um, and because it's a full nudity porn theater, strip club, whatever, they can't serve alcohol, so you can imagine how popular I was in my slutty elf outfit, giving out Jaeger and Goldschlager with like lights and a Virgin of Guadalupe, you know, sticker and everything. And um, and and so the, the dance floor was crowded. And I promise this is the only name I'll drop because name dropping is gross. But our DJ at the moment when I'm giving out the Jaeger shots was John Cameron Mitchell, so you can understand it was like this was like a big fucking yeah, give it up for JCM. But it's it's a big it was a big event in San Francisco in the queer world in that in that moment. So big big party. And then across the dance floor, the crowded dance floor in the porn theater, I see the one person who I least wanted to see, literally the exact last person on the whole planet. You know, wanted to see her less than I wanted to see my grandmother, wanted to see her less than I wanted to see the birthday boy Jesus, and, um, and also the least likely person. It was, it was just inconceivable to me that she could land in this party that my friends and I were throwing for the, you know, all of our 400 most fabulous crazy friends, kind of like this. And, um, and, and, and there she was, and it was, her name was Julie. And Julie sees the alcohol, she sees the bar, she doesn't see me yet. But she starts coming towards me like a really mean hot knife through all this silly gay butter. <laughs> and, I, and I have to, and I have to, and all I could, <laughs> Oh, yeah, we all, who doesn't, who doesn't love butter? Um, so, and, 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 you know, and, it's, and so, I, and so I, have to, I have to get away. This woman is the person who can, she can get me fired come Monday morning. She can make me lose my job. Um, and because she's mean and litigious and always angry. She's a very angry person. Um, and I knew my job where I knew her was I was a, I'm, an, I'm a LCSW, um, and um, I was working as a case manager. Yeah, I give it up for the social workers. I was a social worker working at, uh, at the emergency department case management program, which was housed out of actual trailers that were parked in the parking lot outside the emergency room at San Francisco General. And so the buck stopped at the trailers. Like if you had been through every case management program and had every problem in the book, you came to us and we were fucking punk rock and we did everything for you and we were righteous and we saved lives and we worked really hard and I loved this job because it was challenging and it was technical and it was creative and there was therapy and there was just getting somebody somewhere to live, all this kind of stuff. So I loved my job and one day at this job I get the, I get the folder about my new client, this woman Julie. And it was a huge folder full of letters of complaint listing name, rank, and serial number of everyone who had ever tried to help her. All the other caseworkers she'd ever had all across the city, homeless services, you know, religious groups, everybody. She, you know, and she tried to get them all fired, anybody who tried to help her. And all I could see, you know, it went to the, the mayor's office and the board of supervisors and the, you know, the, the Medicaid bureaucracy in Sacramento at the state level. And all I could see was my name 
on this next batch of, of you know, letters and craziness. Um, and then the next day I got to meet her in person. And she comes in, very tall, erect, graceful, long neck, like everything I'm not. Like she's like very gremlin, you know, she's very graceful um, and, and imperious and people thought she worked there. They're like, oh, a new employee. Um, and she comes in and the first thing, she, she's like an angry egret is kind of what she looked like, like very graceful, which is like pissed. And, and she wanted me to help her, help her fire her old case manager. She's like, you gotta get this guy out of there. I was like, well, I think I'd rather start with getting you off the street and helping you find reliable food. No, 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 you don't know your job. And she jumped up and she's storming out and she's running out on me and she, but she turns around at the last minute and she goes, so when is our next appointment? And asked for an appointment card. So I was like, okay, fabulous. I'm so terrified, I'm so excited. This is gonna be a hell of a ride. And so not long after that is Christmas. And we had worked really hard to set up this party. It was this porn theater. Some of the touches of, of uh, decoration included um, in the downstairs uh, video jack-off booths. We had replaced all the 80s VHS porn with the Rankin-Bass Christmas specials. So you could watch your, you could watch your, you know, uh, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer and your, and your uh, Frosty the Snowman, and then you could, could or could not put your genitalia through the glory holes, which we had, we had adorned with. What did we adorn the glory holes with? Mistletoe, thank you, exactly. We were, so, we were so proud of ourselves. So that was the party. The party's banging. And then again, here she is. She like, he circles in on me. And if you've ever been on a crowded dance floor in a bar with no alcohol, giving out free shots to horny, horny, you know, horny partying queer people, uh, you know that it's not easy to get off that dance floor with your alcohol. So every time I turned, there was a new batch of people like, hey, free Jaeger, we love you. And I was, but I, so I couldn't get away. I was like locked into the dance floor and I was walking. I was like, shit, I should get me the fuck off this dance floor. And, and, and I heard over my shoulder, excuse me, I need a drink. I was like, give me the, <laughs> you know, I'll be back, I'll be back, I gotta go. And then there was a tap on my shoulder. Excuse me, I need a drink. So I turn around. Got to face the, face the music, face the end of my career, face the end of this job that I love. And there she is, there's Julie. And she's still looking at the Jaeger. She hasn't really seen my face yet. And she looks up and instead of pulling out her notebook and starting to write all the, all the things that I'm doing wrong and how she's gonna get me fired and yelling at me and stuff, she just, this, she looks at me like it's the most natural thing in the, in the world. She's like, hi Hunter, can I have a drink of what you have there? And the best thing to do to, to keep my job and to, you know, not have this professional ethical violation um, would be to say no and just you know, try to get the hell off the dance floor still. But I looked at her and she was calmer than I had ever seen her. And she looked like she was considering being happy or like smiling <laughs> while I'm like in my head like freaking out, panicking little freak with my slutty elf, elf outfit. She's like totally, she's, she's cool, she's hanging out. Um, and, so, and so I decided I'm gonna give her the shot. I gave her a half a Jaeger shot because it was only half of a fireable professional ethical violation. <laughs> it seemed like it should count for something when I get dragged in front of the health commission later. Um, and I gave her the shot, she drank it. I said, Merry Christmas, Julie. She said, Merry Christmas. And she turned around and started chatting with the, the cute little bevy of lesbians standing next to her. And I, I like got off the dance floor and kind of cowered for an hour and came back. And she was gone, but the next, the next week after Christmas, we were back in the trailer and I was back in my social worker drag. And she, and, and she came in and she, and she um, you know, and, and she didn't mention it. She didn't say anything about the party. I didn't say anything about the party. I was too scared to say anything. And I worked with her for another three months before she fired me. And I'd like to think in that time that I did better for her, helped settle some of her, helped her settle some of her old grudges, helped her get, what she, get on the road to housing and things she needed. Because I fully understood because of that dramatic juxtaposition in her in the trailer and at the party and me at the trailer and the party, that my clients could be the full people with an incredible range of realities and emotions and presentations as me or any of my colleagues or any of you. Thanks.